This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello sunflowers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Holliana and this is Tilly. And today we are going to be crocheting Tilly her very first Halloween costume. Choosing Tilly's Halloween costume is going to be a joint effort and it started with y'all. A couple weeks ago, I asked you guys what Tilly should be for Halloween and you guys left so many amazing comments. Now I went through and I picked out my top four favorites and it was so difficult to choose. I tried to pick ones that I think that I can crochet based on my level of crochet ability. I also tried to pick ideas that were either representative of our community or ones that were very seasonal and festive because I am so excited for Halloween. The final the final step of deciding what Tilly is going to be for Halloween is going to be decided by Tilly herself. I'm going to take these four pieces of paper with the four different costume ideas on them and we're going to see which one Tilly chooses. Hey baby girl, do you want to pick out your Halloween costume? We've got a pumpkin, a mushroom, a sunflower, and a witch. All right, girly, which one do you want? Which is the one? That one? This one right here? Tilly, are you gonna be a witch? Are you gonna be a witch? Oh my goodness. You're gonna be such a cute little witch. I mean, you would have been a cute pumpkin or mushroom or sunflower, but you are gonna be the cutest little witch. So it looks like Tilly is going to be a witch for Halloween. I grabbed three colors that I think are kind of giving witch hat. I'm thinking we can do like a black witch hat with maybe like stars or moons on it, maybe some little purple accents. I don't really know yet. I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't have a pattern. We're just gonna be doing freeform crochet for this. But before we dive into crocheting Tilly, her very first Halloween costume, I wanna talk to y'all about something really exciting. If you've also been getting into making clothes, whether it's for yourself or for your pet, and whether you're doing like sewing or knitting or crocheting, then you might be interested in today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes across topics like illustration, design, photography, and of course, craft. Whether you're a beginner looking to learn the basics of crocheting or you're more advanced and you want to take your craft to the next level, Skillshare has classes that can help you improve your skills. If you've been thinking about trying Skillshare but you just haven't been sure where to start, you might want to check out their thing called Learning Paths. Learning Paths are these curated collections of classes that are specifically designed to take you through mastering a skill. On our live streams, I've had a lot of you ask me about how you can turn your passion of crafting into a business. Skillshare has classes not just about crafting but also on how to start your own handmade business. Whether you're interested in launching your own Etsy or learning how to market your products, there are so many resources available to help you turn your hobby into a successful business. Y'all know that I just started my knitting journey a couple months ago, and y'all know that I've been dying to learn how to sew. So this fall and winter going into our cozy season, I'm going to be doing just that. I'm going to be using Skillshare to learn how to sew, and I've already been using it to learn how to knit a sweater. I've been diving into the Skillshare original class, Next Level Knitting, Knit Your Own Chunky Crop Sweater by Brandy Cheyenne Harper to learn how to knit my very first sweater just in time for fall and winter. First 500 people to use my link in the description are going to be getting a one month free trial of Skillshare. So if you've been wanting to learn a new skill but you just haven't been sure where to start, today's the perfect day to join. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and y'all, okay, if you're my regulars, you know that this is my first ever sponsorship on my channel. So I am so excited right now. Thank you again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. And with that said, let's get back to crocheting Tilly, her very first Halloween costume. I feel like every freeform crochet project starts the same way with the debate of how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? We're gonna start by making Tilly a witch hat. And I think that we're going to start with a little tippy point of the hat and then slowly increase our stitches to make the base of the hat, make her some little ear holes and then make the brim. That seems like a good place to start. I think I'm going to start with everyone's favorite and least favorite thing, the magic ring. Do y'all know my rhyme for making a magic ring? Hand shake, yarn drape, trekkie hold it steady. Grab your yarn, twist your arm, X marks the spot. Go to T, use your pinky. That is how I hold my yarn when I am starting the magic ring. Then we go under the first part of the X and then over the second part and pull it through. We twist, we yarn over and we pull it through. And that is the start of our magic circle. Okay, I know that that was kind of chaos, so I am going to link a video for y'all where I do show you, as a beginner, how to make a magic circle. Tilly, we need your hat to be like really tiny on the ends. I want it to be like a little creepy witch hat where it just like goes and gets bigger, you know? So we need to make a very, very tiny start to the top of the hat. I should have practiced all of these costumes before making this video, but no. You guys always just kind of see it as it happens. Okay, I'm only chaining like maybe four before I'm gonna like slip stitch these together. Cause like I said, I want the, want the tip of the hat to be the pointy little tip of the witch hat. 
If this goes well, I'm gonna make myself a witch hat as well. Now, if you're a beginner, I will tell you that working with dark yarn is pretty difficult. It is a lot easier to see the holes that you're supposed to be crocheting through if you're using a lighter color of yarn. Even now as I am crocheting with this yarn, I am having a little bit of difficulty seeing exactly where I'm supposed to be crocheting. I'm gonna do a few rows of neither increasing or decreasing just to start the like tip of the hat before we start to increase. All right, I waited till my fourth row to start increasing and then I did two, one, two, one. If you are new to the world of freeform crochet, it's, it's always good for me to remember that kind of everything starts out as freeform crochet. Like everyone who's ever written a pattern kind of started by freeform crocheting, just making it up and writing it down as you go. And then bam, you got a pattern. And don't forget that if you are going to be making patterns, especially if you're making and selling patterns, it is always good to have pattern testers. And I guarantee you that there are people in our community who would want to be pattern testers. So if you are somebody who is making patterns, let us know in the comments if you need pattern testers. And I bet you are gonna find somebody else in the comments who will try your patterns for you to make sure you wrote it all down right. Cause trust me, I have written them down wrong in the past. I officially have lost track of how much I am increasing. I'm just doing what the yarn tells me to do. I'm just looking at it and saying, how much do I need to increase at a time to make this this little tip of the witch hat. It's a little tip of a witch hat. Oh, hi Tilly, do you wanna see your witch hat? Sometimes when I'm crocheting, she sits in my lap. And then sometimes, she just sits here on her chair and judges me. What do you think, girly? How's it look so far? Is it gonna be a good witch hat? Tilly, I think that it's gonna be creepy now. I'm actually really excited. Okay, so I have been like increasing and decreasing. So I increased and then I decreased it right here. And now I am back to doing some increases. If you are new to the world of crochet and you're like, what does increasing mean and what does decreasing mean? Increasing is basically just where you put more stitches into each hole than are supposed to be there. So normally you would do like one stitch in each one of your little stitches. With increasing, you would just put two in each one or three or however many you wanna put. And decreasing is basically the opposite of that. So instead of going into a hole once and finishing it, you might go into the whole yarn over. So you have two on your hook. And then instead of finishing the stitch, you would go into like the next hole, yarn over again. So you have three little pieces of yarn on your hook, yarn over and go through all three. And that's how you start to decrease your project. And that is what gives it this bigger to smaller effect. And that's how whenever you're freeform crocheting, you can make your projects bigger and then make your projects smaller. That's, that's part of what I love about freeform crochet because I can just kind of go with the flow and make it look however I want it to look as I'm creating the project. Tips, what are the chips that we used to put on our fingertips to make it like witch fingers? Like, ha 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 ha, do you guys ever do that? What were they called? Tungins? No, those are the round things, not Ritos. Bugles, bugles. Okay, my hat is looking like a big bugle right now, but it looks like a hat. It looks like a witch hat and I like it a lot. <laughs> I got this new mug yesterday. It's like a pumpkin. Isn't it cute? It's getting just wide enough at the bottom that I think we need to try it on Tilly to make sure it's not too big to see when we need to leave space for her ears. Come here, wanna try your hat? <sighs> All right, I don't think she's gonna come when she's being called, so we're gonna resort to extreme measures. <coughs> Do you know that they're not real birdies? Do you know that they're not real birdies? Do you know it's just me? <coughs> a piece. <gasps> Good jobs, good jobs. We're gonna try on your hat, yes we are. Oh my gosh, y'all. Do you see this? Do you see this? <laughs> it's perfect, it's so perfect. Oh my goodness, Tilly, I think that it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> All right, time to leave room for the ears. You can keep watching your TV as we crochet, it's fine. Mm, good job, baby. Yeah, baby, I can't tell how many chains to make this for your ear. I feel like this is not going to be big enough for your ear. Is that big enough for your ear? I don't think that it is. I don't think it's big enough. You have big ears, baby girl, and they are quite adorable. Hi, baby. Oh, listen to those purrs. Oh, <gasps> you guys hear those purrs. Tilly, do you like the temperature blanket? The thing that you're sitting on? Did you know that it's actually the temperature blanket from 2022? and it's still not done yet. It is literally still not done. It's cute though, right? 
colors are pretty, it's nice and soft. I'm on November 25th right now, so we are getting close to finishing it. It will be done by the end of this year, I promise. Can I see if this fits you before I continue to work on it? When she's really sleepy and I'm making her hats, she doesn't care at all. But tonight she's like in between hunter mode and sleepy mode. Oh, hunter mode again. She saw something and immediately, all right. Yep, I see what she sees. Oh, no, don't eat that. I'm so excited. This is literally starting to look like a witch hat. We have the little holes for her ears and I'm just going around the entire thing now. I wanna create like the brim of the hat now. So I am increasing by doing two stitches into every hole around the brim of the hat. Y'all, the base of our hat is done. I want a witch hat. I really need to make myself a little witch hat now. Look how cute that is. Instead of trying to crochet teeny tiny little stars, I think I'm actually going to just use embroidery thread and just embroider on little stars. I have yet to dabble in micro crochet, but I love it so much. Like look at these adorable little ghosty earrings that I'm wearing. These are actually micro crocheted. I got them in an art fair that I went to this past weekend from a creator called Wild Moon and Brush. And I Did I forget how to draw a star? That looks nothing like a star. Okay, now we're talking. This kind of star is going to be so much easier to do. I am going to cover the hat and these cute little stars now. The little stars completely make the hat. Oh, so cute. Oh my goodness, you're just so pretty. Oh, you're just so pretty in your hat. Yes, you are. Oh my goodness. Oh, it fits perfectly, Tilly girl. Oh, yes, it does. What a pretty girl on a pretty little hat. I am so excited that our little hat fits Tilly. Tomorrow, we're gonna make her cape. I still can't get over the hat. The hat is so stinking cute. You know what else is stinking cute? We have been harness training Tilly, and today we went on like five little mini walks so far. She keeps asking to go back out, so we might go back out again in a minute. Oh, baby girl, do you wanna go back out for another walk? Are you cleaning the outside off of you? Are you dirty now? <laughs> So our goal in like the next couple of years is to be able to get a van, to do a lot more traveling. And we really want to train Tilly to be like a little adventure cat, to really want like hikes with us and stuff and little adventures. So we feel like harness training is definitely the first step. Now that her little witch hat is done, I think it is time for us to make her a little witchy cape. I think I'm gonna make the cape smaller with like ties at the top and then have it slowly get bigger and maybe try to put some like yellow or purple in it. So Tilly, I'm basically just increasing at the end of every row and then the start of every row. That way it's gonna slowly get bigger and bigger and hopefully make you like a little cape. I think it's gonna be super cute. Yeah, it's gonna be super cute, isn't it? So a few weeks ago in my video that was 31 crochet ideas for fall, I talked a lot about color work and how I've been wanting to get into color work and I decided to practice it on Tilly's cape. I know that doesn't look like anything. It's supposed to just be like little little bursts, little stars or something. You know what? We're learning. I'm learning how to change colors as I go and bring the yarn with me on the wrong side of the project. This is crazy that people make entire like tapestries out of out of this kind of this kind of crochet. I am amazed by that and I'm just going to try to keep putting these little star blobs down the back of her cape. <laughs> so the stars aren't looking any more like stars, but I'm getting a lot faster at like changing colors with this like color work thing. I think that I could really, really enjoy doing color work projects. I think that I just need to actually use patterns. I think I need to use patterns or at the very least use like a grid. Have you guys seen those websites? There are like websites where you can upload a photo and then it turns it into like a color work grid for either like doing color work crochet or like cross stitching. It's so cool. So. Maybe I need to dabble into that because I think that just doing it free form is going to be a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. But the actual like technicality of it all and switching colors and stuff isn't hard, but making it look pretty is hard. But I do think that for the sake of this little, this little witchy cape, I think that it's gonna be super, super cute. Y'all look at the adorable little hat with the little cape. It's gonna be so stinking cute. Okay, I really do wanna add in purple. I think I'm gonna do like an outline of the cape in purple and then maybe make like the tie around the neck in purple and also the little tie for her hat in purple. My lines also just like weren't super clean. So I feel like doing a border in purple is going to make this look a little bit crisper, a little bit nicer. And I don't know, purple, yellow, and black just like 
gives witchy vibes to me. Yeah, that's gonna look good. I love the purple border so much on the little cape that I'm gonna try to do a purple border on the hat. What do we think? We think it's gonna be too much. It might like really tie it all together. I feel like we never hang out over here. So I am going to sit over here as we attempt to finish this project. The purple around the brim of the hat is perfect. Perfect. I am now adding little straps. I don't know how long the straps need to be, so I'm gonna make them extra long and we can always frog it if we need to. I literally cannot find regular scissors, so we're using scrapbooking scissors to cut the yarn. Let's see if this works. That didn't work at all. What do we think? Does it fit me? <laughs> okay, it doesn't fit me. Very sad, but I think that this turned out so cute, especially the hat. The hat is like actually iconic. Let's go see if Tilly will put it on. I think the cape will be easier, so I'm gonna do that first. What a pretty little witch you are with your little cape. <gasps> you look so cute, girly. Can we try on your hat now? She's being so good. Let me put this on. Yes, you are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're the cutest little witch in the world. <gasps> baby girl. Oh, cute baby girl. Look at your first Halloween costume. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh my goodnesses. <gasps> you are so... Oh, she's purring. <gasps> Do you know that these are yours? Do you know these are yours? I swear in the past when I made her hats, it's like she just knows that I've made her something. I cannot get over how stinking adorable she is right now. Oh, sleepy cute girl in your cute little outfit. What do you think? Are you a little witch? Are you a little stretchy witch? <laughs> oh, cute girl. You're the cutest witch. The cutest witch in the whole wide world. She's so cute. What a cute baby. Oh, that's just stuff. Oh, is this a girl? Oh, what a good girl. Oh, okay, I can do all the head squitches. All the head squitches. Well, friends, I think that completes Tilly's first ever Halloween costume. And you just look so cute. You just look so cute. It's ridiculous. Thanks for coming along on this journey as I crocheted not only Tilly's first Halloween costume, but the first Halloween costume that I have ever crocheted. And now that I have officially made my first witch hat, I think that I might be making myself a witch hat because I am going to a Renaissance fair soon and it's going to be like Halloween fall vibes, but I still want to have those druid vibes. So I'm thinking I might make a hat and be like the witch of the forest. But I'm up for hearing all of y'all's ideas. So let me know in the comments and also let me know what you or your pets are going to be this Halloween. Thanks for hanging out. If you're new here, welcome to the Sunflower family. I'm Haliana. I'll see you in the next one.